This presentation is about the formation of hurricanes. Hurricanes are immensely powerful storms that have sustained winds exceeding 74 miles per hour. Here is a graphic depicting how air molecules are arranged in the atmosphere. Molecules are very small and cannot be seen with the naked eye, but they're shown here in a way that you can see them. While they are very small, they are affected by gravity and drawn to the Earth. Notice that these molecules stack up upon one another, and the more molecules there are above one another, the higher the air pressure near the Earth. The higher you go in the atmosphere, the lower the air pressure becomes. Air pressure is not exactly the same everywhere, though. This is because winds will begin to blow and stir up the atmosphere. Also, these molecules will be heated and cooled as they are blown around. While the Earth is heated by the sun, most of this heat passes through the atmosphere and heats up the ocean. This heat then will warm the atmosphere closest to it, causing warm air to rise, allowing cool air to replace it. This movement will cause a pressure gradient to form. Sometimes water vapor gets trapped in these eddies in the atmosphere. This often happens over the open ocean. The heat of the ocean increases the air temperature and that provides additional energy to the atmosphere. Eventually, this system draws enough heat from the rising water and boils up into a storm. Because Earth is a globe, it is wider near the equator than it is near the poles. Therefore, air will move slower at the equator relative to air in more northern or southern latitudes. This tends to cause eddies in the atmosphere. Sometimes storms will move across warm water, and these storms will gather energy in the form of heat from the ocean and become larger and larger. As they do so, the storms develop in a circular pattern, and their winds will move faster relative to the earth beneath them. Once these become strong enough, they are described as a tropical depression. Storms forming over the Atlantic are pushed forward by winds known as the intertropical convergence, and then they are carried northward by the trade winds. Many storms will have a bit of a circular motion known as cyclonic circulation. As we have seen, this circulation is generated by eddies in the Earth's atmosphere. Again, this is because of how Earth's atmosphere moves across the planet. As the storm builds in strength, it draws energy from the heat trapped in the ocean. This heat will produce more clouds, which are drawn to an area of low pressure. This is the process of cyclogenesis and is how a storm develops into a hurricane. As the storm builds, a center to the storm develops and a wall of clouds extends into the upper atmosphere. This is the view from within what is known as the eye of the storm. There are different stages in the development of a hurricane. First is a tropical storm which may have winds from 39 to 74 miles per hour. The next level is a hurricane, or Category 1 storm, given the Saffir-Simpson scale. These powerful storms have winds between 74 and 95 miles per hour and often produce damage. Houses could sustain roof damage as they may lose shingles, a house may lose sections of vinyl siding and gutters. Trees will have wind damage and lose large branches, and some shallowly rooted trees may be toppled. Because of the damage to power lines, power may be lost. It is possible a power outage could last from several minutes to several days. In a Category 2 hurricane, the wind speeds exceed 96 miles per hour. These winds cause extensive damage and well-constructed houses 
often sustain major roof damage and siding loss. Many shallowly rooted trees will be heavily damaged or uprooted and will block roads. Near total power outage is expected with outages that could last from several days to weeks. Category 3 winds are between 111 and 129 miles per hour. Winds at this speed cause devastating damage. After these storms have passed, homes often have had major damage and many trees are uprooted and blocking roads. After the storm passes, electricity and water may be unavailable for days or weeks. During a Category 4 hurricane, catastrophic damage will occur. These storms have wind speeds of 131 miles per hour to 155 miles per hour. Well-built houses can sustain severe damage with loss of most of the roof structure and some exterior walls. Most trees will have been downed and fallen trees and power poles will isolate residential areas as they block roads. Power outages will last weeks, possibly to months, and most of the area will be uninhabitable for weeks or months. Finally, a Category 5 hurricane. Although less frequent, these powerful storms cause catastrophic damage. The storms will have winds that exceed 155 miles per hour. Most homes enduring winds of this speed will be destroyed, with total roof failure and wall collapse. Fallen trees and power poles certainly will isolate residential areas as they will block roads. Power outages will last for weeks and possibly even to months. Most of the affected area will certainly be uninhabitable as most houses and homes will be destroyed.